What's going on, horror gang? Welcome to I Shot Him Six Times YouTube Horror Movie Channel. As you know, I'm your host, Marcus. Please be sure to shoot that like button and subscribe to the channel. As well as hit that notification icon so you get all latest content updates to the channel. In this video, I'm going to give you my spoiler review for A24's movie, Men. So if you've not seen this movie, you might not want to watch this video. But if you have seen the movie, stick around, get my take on it, and of course, hit the comment section with your opinions and takes on this movie. Before I get into it, guys, let's hit that intro. I shut in six times. All right, gang, so let's get into it. So. Alex Garland released um, one of his latest projects about a month ago titled Men. I had seen the trailers for this movie and I was very, very intrigued. Thought this is could be something that would be different for sure and figured I'd give it a look once I had time to. And fortunately, I was able to give this movie a look first off the other day, but I actually was able to watch it again right before I did this video, the spoiler review. And um, my thoughts still say the same on this movie. I really, really like it. It was definitely something different. And I didn't know really what to expect this movie to be. So even if I did have a premise on what I thought this movie was going to be like, this movie definitely went in a different direction than what I even probably thought it was going to be going in. So with that being said, we are obviously, this, the cast of um, the, the stars of the movie are Jesse Buckley starring as... um. The main character Harper Marlowe, Papa Asaidu, who plays James Marlowe, her husband, Roy Kinnear, who plays Jeffrey, and a plethora of other characters in this movie, in which he does a phenomenal job at doing, as well as Gail Rankin, who plays Harper's best friend Riley. So the backdrop of this movie is surrounding around Harper and James's fledgling marriage. Harper wants a divorce. Obviously, James does not. He's trying to do everything in his power to keep Harper around. Even going as far as threatening suicide if she leaves him. Which he proceeds to tell her, if you divorce me, I will kill myself. But you will have to live with that on your conscience for the rest of your life. You, I will haunt you forever, essentially. Exactly what he said. And of course, she's, you know, telling him, you can't do that to me. Like, that's not right. This and this and this and this and that. Fast forward to another scene of dialogue between them two. And this is very, very pivotal because this is what leads to the events of David, I mean, of James's fall. Now, here he sees her text on the phone. He snatches her phone or whatever. He's not pleased by whatever messages he sees. And then the phone locks and he wants her to unlock it. Wants her to unlock it again. She refuses to which he prompts to punch her in the face. Now, <clears throat> at this point, excuse me, rightfully so, Harper proceeds to freak out and basically kick James out of the house and even proceeds to tell him, I don't care if you kill yourself, whatever, you know what I mean? I don't care, you you know, put your hands on me, I'm not gonna tolerate this, get out of the house, get out, get out, get out. Well then, shortly after that, we see another flashback scene to where Harper's looking outside the window and that's where you see James falling to his death. Now, real quick, at this point in time, we don't know if James whether or not slipped or he did take his own life. That's a big that's a big premise around this movie, especially in terms of why Harper feels haunted. Is that she doesn't know if he really just let himself go. Or if it was an accident when he was trying to climb out of the neighbor's window and get down to their window, I would assume via the fire escape. So, with that being said, obviously we see James falls to his death, which leads us to the main setting of this movie, which is in in this nice rural, rural like mansion like area. It has a nice this house is really really nice, big house. And it's considered to be a house for healing. That's where she wants to go heal from this traumatic experience of, you know, James dying. So along the way, she meets these men who all literally resemble each other. Like they all look alike, which is very, very important to point out in this movie, 
it's very important to point that out now because it it, it matters a lot later so these three uh, these three main men that she sees initially which is the butler jeffrey the vicar of the church and samuel a character a young man who is sitting outside of the church when harper had went to the church to relieve herself of her stress etc and believe talk to god in her own way and scream it out however she was doing in the church to where after she comes out of the church we see samuel sitting there asking her play to one asking her to play a game of hide and seek which she refuses at this point we see the vicar arrive behind her and basically tell samuel to leave her alone she doesn't want to be bothered samuel gets upset puts the mask back on by the way a stranger style type mask which um samuel was wearing i wanted to point that out you know kind of reminded got kind of got some strangers vibes there with that mask it was kind of like the wife's mask in um strangers but except in this movie the hair is blonde as opposed to in strangers the hair is brown so as samuel's walking off obviously upset that harper didn't want to play hide and seek with him he proceeds to call her a dumb bitch at this point the vicar offers his his you know his services to harper after realizing that you know she was crying and screaming in the church he proceeds to ask her do you feel tormented and she says no and then he proceeds to ask her do you feel haunted and she basically all but says yes so then they sit down to have a conversation to where she's telling him all about james and the situation what have you so then after originally seeming like the you know vicar was showing sympathy he basically proceeds to place the blame for james's death on harper by asking her do you think if you would have let him apologize for him putting his hands on you he'd still be alive which obviously harper got really offended whatnot and proceeded to you know tell him to go f himself and leave so now we fast forward to the bar scene or whatnot where harper you see all of roy kinnear's characters in death all the characters that roy kinnear played in this movie are in this bar scene or whatnot harper goes there to you know have a drink now keep in mind the backtrack real quick while harper was you know looking around the area or whatnot you know trying to you know take in her surroundings she did go into the woods and she did find this tunnel where she would you know did an echo and wanted to hear her echo and she could hear her echo in this tunnel well also at the end of the tunnel tunnel you can see somebody watching her and proceeds to start chasing after her which she starts to you know run and you know head back towards the house on her way of running back towards the house she sees this pale naked man from a distance looking at her this naked man has significance because he later on does show up to her yard at this house while she's on the phone with Riley and then obviously Harper does notice him he tries to get into her house or whatnot she calls the cops and the cops come to arrest him okay just wanted to go back real quick because I did forget to mention that part now going now going to the bar scene as I said we see all of Roy Kinnear's characters in depth and you know in all its glory and the officer who had arrested this naked man in Harper's front lawn proceeds to tell her that the naked man was released you know a few hours earlier which prompts you know Harper to be upset and worried etc so to where she leaves the bar doesn't even get a drink she proceeds to call Riley and tell Riley what's going on as she's trying as she's telling Riley she's going to leave Riley actually instead offers to come up there and be with her instead of you know her just giving up this house that she wanted so bad to heal Riley's trying to be a good friend and just come up there and be with her herself so in the middle of trying to give Riley the address that's when things really start to go haywire and that's when you know the final act scene comes into play in this final act scene this is where you realize that Jeffrey the vicar Samuel and the police officer are literally one in the same they are literally one in the same they are one in the same vessel person just in different bodies they are the same entity just in different bodies I should say or whatever they are the same they're the same person it's one it's literally one entity that can actually 
make it, themselves look like they're in different bodies. It's ridiculous. So, obviously, we get this, you know, final showdown. Now, also, I want to talk about the Green Man real quick. In the church, we see Harper approach this statue, which is, if you look it up, known to be defined as the Green Man. The Green Man is a symbolism of rebirth, according to its definition. Why this is important, especially in the final act of the movie, is because when you are seeing this vest, this entity come out of these vessels, they are literally, this entity is literally coming out of the stomach of each individual vessel that we had seen on screen. So, for instance, for instance, or whatever, Jeffrey, you start to see his stomach grow, and then after that, you see the pastor come out of it. Then after the pastor, you see Samuel come out of the pastor. Like, this entity, whatever this entity is, which we're going to get to that in a second, this entity is able to portray itself as different male characters. So, obviously, we fast forward to where, you know, Harper's backing herself in the house. She's, you know, she's trying to fight back. But in this moment of time, we get the vicar explaining to her how much control she has over his mind. Why this is so significant is especially for the ending ending. So, we see all these, you know rebirths happening from the same entity coming out of these vessels and out of the vessel of Samuel you see from his mouth a pair of feet coming out of him obviously there's another body well this body is none other than David the husband himself so basically in my opinion guys from what I viewed this movie the spirit of David was able to portray itself in these different vessels as these same as in these different vessels of the same entity these men that you see that Riley is encountering and having uncomfortable experiences with this is David just pouring through them this is David all along and the reason why I say that that vicar scene where he's explaining to her how much control she has over him it's basically all but what David is telling her. When David comes out of Samuel's body, out of that vessel, he proceeds to stumble into the living room, sit on the couch to where Harper sits next to him. Harper sits next to him, and he proceeds to tell her how he died. Now, this is where we get how he died. Essentially, he did let himself go. He said he slipped he said he slipped and then, you know, everything, you know, his organs failed upon impact, whatever. But he, if you really, if you really break it down, guys, he definitely did. He let himself go. And then the reason why I believe that is because he proceeds to tell Harper, do you see what you did to me? Do you see what you made me do? This is why that vicar scene is so important in terms of control. You know what I mean? He is basically telling Harper that she has so much control over his mind that he was willing to kill himself. That not only he was willing to kill himself, the spirit of him was willing to haunt her for the rest of her days for this simple fact. Now, <clears throat> now, while he's telling her, you know, this is all your fault, she proceeds to ask him, what do you want from me, James? And he says, your love. Which she pr proceeds to respond, huh, yeah. And then the credits roll to the title men. Now, while I think that, in my opinion, that is kind of a little bit significant and kind of a little touch, in my opinion, is because, guys, we see it all the time in relationships. If you are crazy about somebody, more chances than not, you, are willing, you will be willing to go above and beyond to show your love even in the craziest ways possible. I just, in my opinion, with this movie, this was some really off-the-wall spiritual way of a man trying to force his woman to love him. All for, in the end, it not to work anyway. Still did not work. Still did not work, and obviously it could work because obviously he was dead or whatnot. But just the fact that his spirit went through all that trouble just to 
get her to love him just for her love and it still not it still didn't work still didn't work and that's how it happens this is why in my opinion guys it, it, this movie is is so relatable that's why i like this movie more than anything it is so relatable to what actually happens on in these type of marriages in these type of relationships when one doesn't want to let go and the other does that's why i find this movie so so fascinating it is so relatable to what goes on in real life and i like that about this movie now back to how obviously the green man before i you know close up this spoiler review back to how the green man plays into this is obviously with all these vessels giving birth to each other we are basically seeing the rebirth in, in so many ways of david we are seeing the rebirth of his spirit through these vessels but not only that not only that at the end of the movie you see riley show up and much to the audience's surprise riley is pregnant why this is significant guys is because obviously this is a symbolism a symbolism of what the green man stands for rebirth but not just obviously rebirth in the terms that riley's having a child it's a rebirth for harper the character herself herself she has finally put the ghosts and the demons and the spirits of david i mean david god i keep saying that or whatever i'm thinking of a fear because I'm, I'm doing a fear video coming up here very very soon and i keep thinking of that as well but james or whatnot this is harper's rebirth of her marriage from with james this is her rebirth this is her life rebirth this is a new start for her a real new start now that she's put away all these demons and this whole issue is put behind her now this is her chance at a rebirth at life at a rebirth at life that's how i took this whole green man premise that's what i'm taking from it you guys is that this ending scene which you see why the green man is so important is because symbolically what they are telling you is that she is this is a rebirth at her own life this is this is now her shot of getting away from that marriage that you know that bad cloud that dark cloud that was hanging over her head and now she's ready to rebirth her life and start anew that's the that's that's just in my opinion though you guys that's what i took from this movie you know but overall like i said guys i really enjoyed this movie it was more disturbing than scary but it boy was it disturbing it was really really disturbing and if you guys like disturbing movies i think you guys will really like this one i i think alex garland did a fantastic job with this movie and he's definitely becoming one of the better horror suspense you know directors out there that we have in hollywood for sure i was really really impressed with this movie especially with how relatable this movie was in terms of how relationships are in real life i really really enjoyed this movie based on just more of that than anything because as movie fans especially horror movie fans you want characters and you want a story that is relatable to to you to what you can be relatable in real life and i got a lot of that with this movie definitely got a lot of that with this movie but that's my take on on men you guys that's my take on this movie and my spoiler review for men hit the comment section and let me know what you guys think if you have watched this movie do you agree with my perception and my view of this movie or do you have a different take on how this movie is hit the comment section i want to hear from you guys all right gang i'm gonna wrap it up for this video once again this is i shot him six times i shot him six times youtube our movie channel sorry guys i am very very tired it is 3 35 here on the east coast but once again, this is I Shot You Six Times, YouTube Horror Movie Channel. Please be sure to shoot that like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So I'll set that notification icon to get all the latest content updates to the channel. I'm going to catch you guys later. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Reddit as well. Thank you for watching.